Subaru would like you to stop thinking of them as a niche brand, thank you very much. Since 2010, their yearly sales have doubled from 23,000 units. They've done solid work carving out their place in the automotive landscape not by mimicking their competitors, but by raising the bar for what consumers can demand, and receive, in the segment in which Subaru fields its vehicles. But why not be niche? Blending in is for amateurs, determined to be all things to all people. Subaru should simply promise to be all things Subaru, labels be damned. It's the AWD, stupid, to borrow the spirit, if not the direct words, from James Carville as he kept Bill Clinton on point in 1992. A recent drive in the all-new 2018 Subaru Crosstrek revealed a second hit with their new Subaru Global Platform. It's currently auditioning under the new Impreza, and its introduction to the Crosstrek greatly steps up the subcompact SUV's game. Or compact SUV. Or compact car. Subaru is attempting to straddle a few Venn diagram borders with the Crosstrek, some I can reasonably see and some I can't. It's a little bigger than most subcompacts, and little smaller than the compacts. It's reached to the actual car segment currently sporting the Honda Civic, the Mazda 3 and VW's Golf and Jetta, I can only see as a projection on the fact that the North American market seems to currently believe they need more car than they actually do. Subaru has long been defined by its sporty attributes and even more sporty buyers. Subby owners are loyal, retain value is high, and if you announce you've bought a Subaru, it might be the only make you don't get a lot of argument about. Dealers are responsive, something I attribute to the nicheness of the brand. It's that sporty reputation that is working on the cross-strike side. It's entirely workable in urban settings through the week, and beyond capable for the weekend warriors who want to strap anything to the roof, Subaru sells a variety of roof rack systems to customize your bike board boat requirements, and head for the hills. Speaking of those hills, the 2018 Crosstrek has a 6-speed manual transmission, up from last year's 5, on offer at 3 levels, but I'd pass. It's not that it's that awful, well, actually it kind of is, it's that the continuously variable transmission, CVT, is that good. Their X mode, which comes on all CVT options, is impressive. We were banging it through water holes and heading it up 74 degree inclines, the kind where you can only see the sky through the windshield. Not a whimper. The hill descent mode has you hanging from your seat belt, feet off the pedals, as the vehicle tracks itself back to safety. I've done it in vehicles that cost four times as much and this compared amazingly well. CVTs are generally regarded as the bastard child of transmissions. Lugging and pulling, wheezing and whining, they're good for fuel economy but suck most of the joy out of driving in too many incarnations. Subaru has paired one of the better CVTs with their new global platform, a lighter, more rigid body with a more nimble suspension system. The result is a quieter ride, less body roll in tight corners and better handling that maintains Subaru's already stellar safety ratings, one they realistically anticipate the 2018 Crosstrek will repeat. Available in several trims in four models, Convenience, Touring, Sport and Limited, the interiors reveal Subaru upping what had previously been its weaker suit. The 2018 Crosstrek features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in every model and a useful smaller horizontal screen above the larger one that keeps pertinent info in your line of sight without tugging your attention from the road. Subaru is proud of the double needle orange stitching that complements the upholstery game inside the new Crosstrek. It's as lovely as the focus groups told them it would be, and it might be one of the only ways for prospective buyers to remember which compact or subcompact SUV they test drove last. The styling and shape of nearly everything in this segment, like most these days, are all much of a muchness. They'll duke it out in advertised cargo space, and how accessible that cargo space really is. The new Crosstrek has punched out the rear entry a few millimeters, enough that you don't have to cantilever your golf bags to get them in. 
Sometimes that stylish land other manufacturers incorporate is simply a nuisance when you're actually using your vehicle and not just looking at it. Nope, compact SUVs and subcompact SUVs all look like they're craved from the same block of wood. Most are sold in a variety of colors ranging from black to white to gray and more gray, though Subaru had us in two new entries, Sunshine Orange, which is very orange, and Cool Gray Khaki, which is light blue. You'll want to put the cross track on your comp list because of what's under it, not because you can pick it out of a police lineup. Pricing for the 2018 starts at $23,695 for the 6-speed manual transmission you don't want, but just $24,995 for the one you do. Fully loaded cross strikes top out at $33,195, with lots of choice in between those two price points. Infinity has revealed an all-electric, retro-inspired race car prototype which will go on display at the 2017 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance. The classic car show brings together 200 of the most pristine retro vehicles in the world, with the most historically accurate and well-maintained examples earning awards. However, with thousands of people attending the day-long event in California, manufacturers often put unique prototypes on display, such as the Prototype 9 revealed by Infiniti. Engineers at Nissan's premium division worked on the After Hours project, which was designed to evoke memories of the emerging era of Japanese motorsport in the 1960s. Its retro appearance was built using traditional methods, with panel beaters hammering the sheet metal into shape by hand. Meanwhile, the smooth shape, open cockpit and long bonnet are said to be inspired by aeronautical designs. Despite the classic styling, Infinity was keen to incorporate modern technology underneath and fitted a new electric powertrain. It uses a 30 kWh high-voltage battery with a prototype electric motor, which it says has not yet been used on a production vehicle. It makes 146 bhp and 320 Nm or torque, driving the rear wheels through a single-speed transmission. Alfonso Albaisa, Senior Vice President of Global Design at Infinity, said, The beautiful execution of Prototype 9 represents a combination of artistry, craftsmanship and commitment to a romantic notion of our heritage. It inspired our people to work on Prototype 9 in their own time, as they were completely invested in the project and the details and features originated with them. Prototype 9 has been a labor of love for many of us. The 2017 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance takes place on Sunday, August 20th. Infinity just provided the answer to a question nobody asked, and the resulting trip through time, with a few modern touches, is really quite interesting. Infinity unveiled the Prototype 9 concept ahead of its debut at the 2017 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance. It's basically a retcon of motoring history, with Infinity's craftsmen wondering what a 1940s road checker would look like if they were designed today, built using old-school methods and containing a next-gen Nissan Leaf driver train. The car was not built in a factory by robots. Infinity instead relied on Nissan's stable of Japanese craftsmen, who assembled to build this car by hand in a quiet corner of Nissan's research center in Yokohama. The steel body panels were shaped with hammers, and the tires are the old-school bias ply type, in keeping with the historical aspect of it. The interior is equally well-crafted. The exposed cockpit features black leather with red contrast stitching, an aluminum steering wheel hub, an instrument panel and that's about it. After all, race cars in the 1940s didn't have screens all over the place and other types of high-tech frippery. Underneath the steel body panels and steel ladder frame lies a powertrain from a next-generation EV that's probably the 2018 Nissan LEAF. Its single electric motor is bolted to the rear wheels via a single-speed transmission, and it puts out 148 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. It'll hit 60 mph in 5.5 seconds and should last about 20 minutes on the track with a heavy right foot. The design is stunning, although I personally believe the grille is a step too far. 
It's not often that automakers reach this far back in time for new concepts, but we're glad Infinity did.